episode seven. How are you all doing? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Joining us for the first time tonight. <laughs> That was the first time we ever did that. Uh, yep. Special hello to Proud Prince who gave us a six months uh, subscription. Hi, Bob. Did you change Switch profile pictures to the new Mario 35th anniversary? No. We're going to talk about the Switch update today. Uh, I didn't change any of my... I love my profile picture. It's my me doing one of, doing one of these. Like coming out from the side. It's very, it's very nice. I'm not... I do like the new 35th anniversary Mario pictures, like icons, but uh, I will not be changing my icon. I like my icon too much. Mine is like me, my me, like punching up, flying towards the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am with you. I probably won't also be using the Mario 35th screens. They're, again, they're, they're cool. Yeah. But I don't I don't need that in my life. I like mine. I like also people were making fun of me because I haven't changed my Xbox avatar since the Xbox three sixty. But why would I do that? Yeah, I haven't changed mine either. I did create a new avatar in like the new avatar like mm -hmm. format, whatever, and I hate him. <laughs> I hate him so much. I'd much rather use the old avatar look. And that's still my icon. We The problem is yes. these game companies have terrible icon options. Yes. That's true. Especially Sony. The original Xbox 360 avatars were absolute garbage. The little monkey and like the guy with the beanie and the skull. Yeah. Those are all absolute trash. I think and I actually paid for a Dark Knight avatar <laughs> set just because I hated the default so much. Sony had good ones. No, they didn't. Sony no, no, had no, worse no. ones. Sony had bad ones. I'm sorry. So Sony yeah. had bad ones. Actually, Nintendo has pretty good ones. I actually yeah, like Nintendo's Nintendo's. probably the best out of them all. But I, I'd rather have my my Mies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we ha we're going to talk about the Switch update because there's actually some stuff in there that that's going to change the way that you interact with the Switch. It's actually a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's the top of the month. It is officially December 1st, and that means that we got new games coming to your PlayStation Plus Instant Games Collection and Xbox Live Games with Gold. Instant Yay. Games Collection. I, I believe that's the official name for it. That's what they're doing now? I, I think it's always been like that name. Oh, it's just PlayStation Plus in the corner, Will. You, you're confusing me. But it's PlayStation Plus Instant Games Collection. Oh. But I don't. they don't like officially refer to that, at, refer to it as that anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just free games you get with PlayStation Plus. Right. That's how that's how I Yeah. Yeah. But you know, because Xbox Xbox Live Gold is one thing, and then the games you get with it are games with gold. Right. So Well, that's a good name. Think... It's 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 the games that you get with your gold subscription, games with gold. I I but you know, wouldn't it make sense for Sony to also have a name for their free games that come yeah. with PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus free games. <laughs> I don't know why it's got to be a whole freaking thing. I don't like that branding. Anyway, uh, starting today, you December get Fortnite. 1st, Fortnite's free. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on place on PlayStation Plus, uh, you get Worms Rumble for I believe for. PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Okay. I believe yeah, Here it is. Yeah, for yeah, Worms Rumble for PS4 and PS5. People love Worms. I I know. And this, uh, is, this is a is... this is a newer one, but this what is this yes. like a battle uh, this this looks like a like a yeah, multiplayer I think this is, shooter. This is their uh their Fortnite entry. Uh, uh <laughs> Is it 2D? I can't tell. I think so. Yeah, it's 2D. Okay. Worms has traditionally been 2D. But Worms is like kind of turn-based, isn't it? Kind of. Like you, one person shoots and then the other person shoots. Yeah, because in traditional Worms, you're not just trying to destroy each other. You're just trying to destroy the land that they're on. Yes. Because that helps in turn, like, you know, take out your opponent. Stuff. This is 32 players. Yes. Uh, I think it said cross-system play. Okay. So Yeah. So that's fun. Uh, then there's Just Cause 4. 
the fourth entry in the Just Cause series. They're up to five now. Are they? Aren't they? I thought four was the most recent. Just Cause. Just Cause. As just, I like to call just it. Just Cause. <laughs> no, you're right. They're up to four. Yeah. Uh, I think I now have all of these games. I've never played a single one. <laughs> <laughs> How do you have all of them then? Through games with gold and PlayStation Plus. I think I bought Just Cause 2 for like five bucks with all the DLC on like a deals weekend or whatever. So I, I've never paid more than five bucks for them. I think we have the first one on disc for original Xbox somewhere. Why? I don't know. This is when you worked at GameStop and you just took home random games. I just stole. That was back when I yeah. used to just steal things. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they I was just acquire games sometimes. Uh, yeah. A lot of people love Just Cause. It's fun. Little yeah, Just Cause, uh, popular open world sandbox game where you just cause destruction. Why? Just Cause. <laughs> just Cause. Fun fact, cause. D- it's developed by Avalanche, isn't it? Yes. They are. Uh, they have an office in New York. In New York and somewhere in like Scandinavia or something. Yeah, well, there's like two different studios named Avalanche. There's the one that made Just Cause and they also made uh, the Mad Max game from a few years ago. And then there's the Avalanche that made Disney Infinity, which is a completely different mm-hmm. Avalanche. I think the... I think the one in New York is the just think, just cause one. Yeah, I think the one in New York made just cause, and then their Scandinavia team made Mad Max. Uh, Avalanche Studios Group. Yeah, yeah. This Swedish is... video game developer in Stockholm. Yeah, it is a parent company that includes Avalanche Studios, Expansive Worlds, and S- S- Systemic Reaction. Yeah. Uh, the company then opened a studio in New York City to work on Just Cause 3, while the Stockholm team worked on Mad Max in collaboration with Warner Brothers. Okay. So I don't know what the one in New York did, but it did Just Cause, cause 3. Yeah. All right, what else you got? Okay. Uh, last one is Rocket Arena for the PS4. Wasn't this one of the games they showed off? This is Fortnite. Yeah, this is Fortnite. Um, but wasn't this one of the games they showed off in like their PS5 reveal? It is. And uh, it it doesn't look good. <laughs> this this trailer is not at all anything I've seen before. This is a cinematic trailer. Nice. Right. There's the gameplay. Yeah, and I'm it. pretty sure, because I redeemed all these games already, um, it's the PS4 only version of Rocket Arena that's available. Oh. Not the PS5 version. But you could play it on PS5. You could play it on PS4, yes. PS4. But as we've seen, uh, Sony is very bad at clarifying what's cross compatible, what you can get an upgrade for, what you can't. So yes, they are very bad. Yeah. Um. So this is just Fortnite with rockets, and it's team based. Yeah. There. There you go. Uh, free mult- online multiplayer. We get Cold War's free. Oh, the 19th to the 20th. Why do they got to do it before Christmas? It's a free online multiplayer weekend. <laughs> so yeah. for the 19th and the 20th of December, you can play Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Grand Theft Auto V Online, and uh, FIFA 21, the online modes for free. You don't and, have to be a member of PlayStation Plus. And you don't need the games, right? You need the games. But if you if you're, if you own the games and you you're not subscribed to PlayStation oh, Plus. You can play those games. That's dumb. That's not as interesting as I thought. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. All right, Xbox. All right. Oh, we got Xbox is having a month. <laughs> They've been having a few months. Uh, all right. So for the entire month of December on the Xbox One, you get the Raven Remastered. Uh, and then from December 16th to January 15th, you get Bleed 2. Everyone's I don't know. Favorite Bleed Two. I haven't heard of either of these games. Uh cult classic. Well, Bleed. Gotta look, get a look. Look up. Go to the Wikipedia of Bleed and look. Look and and read the whole thing right now. Don't actually do that. I don't know anything about Bleed. <laughs> I know about the game Blood. Like that's a fairly well known. I don't know that either. I don't. Know that's that. a fairly like culty '90s first-person shooter, like from the Duke Nukem era. 
but I don't nothing about the Raven remastered or bleed. Uh, you, oh, bleed actually looks chat, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, bleed looks like a hmm. How do I put that? Uh, looks oh, like a yeah. Newgrounds type. Uh, okay. What is it, what does this look like? It's got the mark on the ninja style controls with the mouse. And yeah, the, and the Wazda. That should be a Switch game. And Saints Row, cat out of gad out of hell. So on the Xbox 360, choice. which you can play on your Xbox One or Series X through backwards compatibility, uh, starting today to December 15th, you get Saints Row, Gat out of hell. Get it? Because his name's Johnny Gat, and he's getting out of hell like a bat out of hell. Did not. Get the, did Gat not get out it. of hell. Um, and then from December 16th to the 31st is Stacking. Stacking is, I know it's a Double Fine Studios game um, where you play as a Russian nesting doll. That's as far as I got. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I'm gathering that from the trailer. Uh, I don't think, I think Xbox is winding down on their games with gold. I don't think that they care anymore about games with gold. I mean, clearly they don't, but it's shocking that we're entering the next generation of Xbox. And instead of like, you know, putting out better games, they're just they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Well, well so so here's the thing. There, I, I also put in here that uh, Xbox Game Pass, the Twitter account, tweeted. Uh, yeah. They said we couldn't fit 17 games in a single coming soon post. Look at us now, and they have 17 games coming to Game Pass. So right. maybe this is kind of going to be announced every month. Maybe, but. You know, games gold and Game Pass are two different markets. Uh, At least in my opinion. Yeah. So, so, coming soon to Xbox, Game Pass, Control, Doom Eternal, Holiday Offer, and more. A lot of you are new to Game Pass right now. Hi, everyone. And to those of you lurking here to check out what games will be coming soon, hi to you too. We have a big list of games coming at you and to sweeten the deal for those that haven't tried Xbox uh, game pass ultimate yet for a limited time starting december 3rd you can get your first three months for one dollar damn <laughs> i just missed out on that that's all the games we already have plus everything coming soon here below uh all our perks like 30 days of disney plus i didn't know that yeah. And starting December 15th, all the EA Play titles on PC as well. Slaps roof of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. <laughs> you can fit a lot of games in here for just $1. Uh, you got Control. What's with Android and console version? I, I think that means you can play it on Android or console. Because not all these games are going to all platforms. D does that mean streaming via Android? Or does that mean it's... I could download it to my end. No, there's no I think way that means could... streaming. Yeah. yeah. I think that, that that's X cloud. Right. Uh, so control doom eternal is PC only. Uh, yeah. Haven console and PC uh, rage Two Android slime rancher, Android and console. Uh, I don't know. Oh, cyberpunk bartender action. What? Okay, I'm skipping over that game. Yes, Your Grace, uh, Dragon Quest uh, 11S. Oh, wow. That's a big deal. Call of the Sea, Monster Sanctuary, Starbound, Unto the End. Uh, so not all of these are for all consoles. It's either, it's yeah. either Android, console, or PC. Assetto, Corsa, Gang Beasts, Android and console. That's a pretty big deal. Greedfall, Super Hot Mind Control Delete. I don't know what that is. I don't know if this is like an expansion or like the sequel to it, but apparently like this game is now there's a second super hot game out now. Mind Control Delete gives you more insight into the signature power fantasy world of super hot with more story, more signature gameplay, more action, more guns, keeping keep dancing the slow motion ballet of destruction for so much longer than ever before. Super hot is an amazing game, but I'm kind of waiting for a, a sequel. I don't want to play it. I don't want to yeah. play it again, you know. Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, Android console and PC. There you go. And that one I heard was the good one. <laughs> oh, more games with Xbox touch controls. Bloodstained. I can't imagine playing that with touch controls. <laughs> Golf with your friends. Hyperdot. 
Eichenfell, Indivisible, Scourgebringer, The Tourist, uh, Va Vambrace, Cold Soul. Okay. That's it. So you gotta, I, yeah. I mean, uh, you, if you have Game Pass, you got a lot of games. If you don't have Game yeah. Pass, it's a dollar for three months. That's a very big deal. Yeah. But that starts December 3rd, so don't get it yet. You gotta wait two days. Uh, that's crazy. And, and and if you don't have an Xbox, you can play Game Pass games on PC or on your Android phone. Yes. Again, not every game will be available on every platform, but at least you know you got your foot in the door for when everything does come to every platform. Right. 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 Okay. So that's that. That's all the uh, free games you can play. This. This. Yes. Or you know games that come with subscription services. Uh, anyway, we got bald beard with a bit. Keep up good work, guys. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. Yous. I guess now we should probably talk about the Switch update, huh? I guess. Oh, let me open up all these tabs here. Uh, uh Wario64 tweeted this, and that's how I found out about it. Uh, Nintendo Switch, uh, firmware 11.0.0 released. They actually added stuff can now transfer screenshots slash videos to smart devices, although there should be a giant asterisk there. Uh, copy <laughs> screenshots slash videos to computer over USB, which is kind of a big deal. Prioritize downloads, which is also kind of a big deal. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 35th Anniversary Avatars and more. These are the avatars. They look very nice. I like the uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 Famicom uh cover icon he's got right here um yeah very a lot, a lot of old school mario stuff going on it's very nice uh transferring this is from wario 64 transferring switch screenshots to smartphone is weird you scan a qr code to join the switch wi-fi then a second code to download the gateway or whatever to access the media so you have to that's just it's a local Wi-Fi connection in order to transfer the screenshot to your right. phone. That just sounds like unnecessary busy work. You can see on his... This is a screenshot from his phone. I guess it's Safari. And he yeah. has the local... The private IP address in the top bar. It's... It, I, I don't think this is easier than it was before. No. Before, you just I take do... the SD card out and put it... I mean, you could still take the SD card and put it in the computer, but, you know. Well, I mean, before you could just post it to Twitter directly, but it, mm -hmm. it was was still limited by the old 140 character count. They never upgraded it to. Oh, the, I didn't know that. 280. Yeah, I did not know that. Uh, everybody yeah. was telling me just just upload it to Twitter or Facebook. Just do that. Yeah, I don't want to tweet every time. I don't want people to. I I don't want to make public the screenshot every time. You know. Yeah. I used to upload stuff from the PS4 through Facebook and set it to only me, so only I could see it. Yeah. And then I would download it from there. Uh, and I guess you could probably do that on this. Well, now on on Sony, you can just plug in a USB drive and copy the video files over. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same thing with Xbox, I think. Well, okay, so... I said on Twitter, Xbox and PlayStation... Well, okay, so Xbox definitely has it so that you can just... Uh, you take a screenshot and it, you get a push notification on your phone if you have the mm -hmm. app, if you have the Xbox app. You get a push notification on your phone that says, hey, uh, you just took a screenshot or you just took a video. Do you want it? And you say yes. And then it downloads right to your phone, right into your camera roll. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. That is how they all should do it. I think PlayStation does that, but everybody was telling me that they don't do that. I could have sworn that I got a push notification on my phone when uh, I took a screenshot. I'll have, I'll have to check that next time. It might be a PS5 time. thing. Maybe. But I know I know on PS4, at least, you can just plug in a USB drive and you can copy things over back and forth. Like It's super easy. And that's actually how I got uh, footage to do uh, for my Spider-Man PS4 review. I just recorded it straight from there and just copied it over right yeah it, it, xbox isn't that easy with the usb drive no 
Yeah, which is but really stupid because it should have rem- like a computer. I, honestly, I remember when I when I first got my Xbox One, it you can sign up uh, for one drive with it and it'll save everything to one drive. That's that was, was pretty convenient. That's what I've been doing until yeah. I realized that if you just have the app, it'll just download right to your phone, right, which is right. way more convenient. Mm-hmm. Um, people were arguing that uh, the reason they didn't have app integration is because the app isn't available in all countries. But okay. how about you just have the app integration for people who have the app? You know, like they could the people who don't have the app are in this are still gonna be in the same boat. Why do they have to take I, it away for the people who have the app? So I don't use the Switch Online app unless I open it by accident. Yeah. And I remember when it first came out, it was literally just had an icon for Splatoon and I think Mario Kart. That's it. And then like I when I opened it up by accident, like a few weeks ago it was much more like robust it had a lot more like content on it but it still was very bare bones like you still really couldn't do anything in it other than initiate a chat yeah they really made a bad app like there's no yeah. reason to have the app at all that they it, it's only there for voice chat which is unfortunate right. um but it could do so much more they they really drop the ball on that look i mean just look at xbox and playstation's apps the xbox app is amazing but the the playstation app is also play- good yeah especially since they revamped it it's much better mm-hmm. sorry i'm just going into because i haven't actually looked at the new transfer uh, honestly i don't even think i've updated my switch yet <laughs> uh but here we go we're really? on the, what because I was saying, like, I downloaded a bunch of games from Cyber Monday, and I'm like, oh, I better update my Switch so I make sure everything works right after. I, I, I haven't even uh, touched my Switch. I just plugged yeah. it in. Send to uh, smartphone. Nintendo Switch system updates cha- and change history. Uh, this is uh, from the Nintendo support site uh, where they yeah. post the, where they post the, uh, you know, patch notes and whatnot. Right. Um. It's what it's eleven dot zero dot zero. It came out November thirtieth. Uh, performing the system. No, we know how to perform the system update. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online was added to the home menu. All uh, access all Nintendo Switch Online services from get from getting the latest information to checking the membership status. I don't know what that means. Do you see a an icon for Nintendo Switch Online? Uh, at the bottom. Yeah. So hold on. So on the home screen, right hold there. On. Oh, they added one extra icon. Wow. They added, yeah. It's a it's a red icon. It stands out from all the other icons because <laughs> it does not match the the UI the the, the GUI pretty that's, much. That's kind of lame. Yeah, but you tap it. This I looked at a little bit. By the way, I'm trying to send a picture to your phone from the Switch. You have to scan a QR code, <laughs> and then you have to scan another QR code. That's what Wario said. Yeah. I hate it. So Switch Online, basically, uh, there's a homepage. It's a uh, page for online play games, games that you have, and also games that are app compatible. Uh, It has a complete list of all the NES and SNES games that are available through Switch Online. Well, that's 105 in total. Damn. There are 700 games for the NES. (laughs) Jesus Christ. FYI. Uh, save data, cloud backup, and it's got a list of all your saved games up in the cloud. Ooh. You can manage those easier. So let's talk about that for a second. I don't think it's yeah. on the actual patch notes. It might have been a hidden thing. Um, it you can it will now automatically download uh new save data as long as it detects that there is save data. Yeah. So if you've ever downloaded save data before, so okay, so if you have a switch and a switch light like I do, and you want to pick up where you left off on your switch light, it will now automatically download the save data as long as you have downloaded that save data in the past. Yeah. So it'll know and it'll keep itself updated, which is one of the things that has kept me from using my switch light. 
it was supposed to do that in the past but yeah. it never worked right there was always a conflict and it was scary because i it could mean that you lose your save but apparently they fixed that or something oh it's actually right here uh it is actually the next list item here a new feature that automatically downloads backed up save data was added to the switch uh to the save data cloud when using software with the same with the same nintendo account linked to multiple systems save data backup from one console will automatically be downloaded to your other systems to use this feature it must be enabled under system settings data management save data cloud all right i gotta remember to set that save data will not be downloaded automatically unless save data for that software exists on the console oh there you go well that makes sense mm -hmm. the first time only users must download the save data manually okay so you do have to download the save data manually which right. is kind of annoying to have to do that for all your games but Whatever. I don't have that many games on my Switch Lite. A Nintendo Switch Online membership is required to use Save Data Cloud Backup. So I'm going to have to give that a shot. Yeah. Uh, a new trending feature was added to the user page. Users can check what software their friends are playing or have started playing recently. Information will not be displayed for friends who have their Switch, their online status set to display to display to no one do you have this have you seen this yes uh, i'm looking at it right now uh check out what games are trending with your friends uh I one friend recently started age of calamity one friend recently started uh immortals phoenix rising and one friend recently started final fantasy 11 12 Sh sorry Sh final fantasy 12 show the class all right like that wow. it's right it's right under your friends list I just realized I could just, uh, I could just do this. It also shows um, not only what people recently started, but what your friends have been playing. Uh, Bob has been playing Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, Mario Maker Two, uh, Ultra Street Fighter Two, uh, Donkey Kong Arcade Archives, and Mario Brothers Thirty Five. Of course. I mean, people could have guessed all that. <laughs> uh, I just, I just, everybody just watched me hit the update button on my Switch. I was going to show, like, <laughs> I was going to walk through the new UI, but, uh, yeah. Too bad. It's got to update. Uh, where are we? Users can now, uh, uh, yeah. Users can now transfer screenshots and videos from album to their smart devices. Users can wirelessly connect to their smart devices to Nintendo Switch to transfer the screenshots and videos saved within their album. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not, yeah. Uh, not the easiest way to transfer your stuff. Uh, for screenshots, users can transfer a maximum of 10 screenshots and one video capture at once. To connect, users must use their smart device to scan a QR code displayed on the Nintendo Switch screen. Uh, QR code is a registered trademark of Denso Wave Incorporated. Oh. Did not know that. What the hell's Denso Wave? Oh, QR code. Oh. Yeah. So I have the UI up on my screen right now. Uh, there's the okay. <laughs> there's the very bad looking uh, Nintendo Switch Online icon. They could, set like a sore thumb. They could have done that a little better. Oh my God. They could have just put like they make it gray and just have the silhouette of the joy cons or whatever the the problem is that it's all lines so they would have to make yeah how do you make an icon for online i mean i get it that's the branding but it does not look it it's, a, it's not in line with i'm gonna i'm gonna design it later it should be it should be the joy con outlines mm-hmm and, and it could still say online. And and the little three three uh three arcs for Wi-Fi coming up oh. the side. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand if they wanted it like I understand they had to make it different because of the branding and whatnot. But by making it so different, you're signifying that this is a big important thing. And so far, there's nothing really like that interesting in there. Or something that couldn't have been put in like the settings menu or just on somewhere else, you know? Oh, it it's got a whole thing. Yeah. Tennis Switch Online is a paid service designed to enhance. I have it. Why are you telling me? Okay. Oh, it's gotta walk me through the whole thing. Yeah. 
Wow, okay. Trending, save data cloud. Oh, it tells you, oh, this is actually pretty nice. It gives you a whole little overview of everything that yeah. Switch Online has to offer because everybody thinks it's a waste of money. <laughs> it's. I feel like it's acting like I don't have it already. Oh, no, it says family membership. Yeah. Ooh, and you could just straight up buy the... Oh, I could buy a new uh, Super Nintendo controller because you stole it, Well, I don't know you where stole, it is. Somebody stole it. Yeah, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. It's probably mom. Is this is this not... Hold on, where did that go? I just, I just saw the uh, Earthbound font. There it is. Is Game Trials, is that not Earthbound? Where is she? Hold on. Now I gotta... It's on the screen. Look, look at my screen. Special offers, games, products. I don't see what you're talking about. You're not looking... Oh, are game, you looking at my game screen? Tri game trial. I'm looking trials. at it right now. Yeah. Okay. Is that the Earthbound font? I don't it's, think so. It's It's similar. It's similar. It's not the same font, but it's a, it's a similar <laughs> styling. All right. Uh, I mean, what else is there to look at here? We got a... Uh, I'm not going to try to send a screenshot. I, I don't want to go through all that nonsense. No, it's it's kind of cool cumbersome. that it shows you game trials, though. You can see what demos you can play. Yeah, I've always liked that. A new copy to a computer... Oh, a new copy to a computer via USB connection feature was added under system settings, data management, managed screenshots, and video. Users can use a USB cable to connect Nintendo Switch to their computers to copy the screenshot and videos under uh, saved under album. Uh, a USB charge cable uh, or a USB IF certified USB cable that supports data transfer is required to connect to a computer. For more information, please refer to Nintendo Switch website. Uh, connection via the Nintendo Switch dock is not supported, of course. Please connect the Nintendo Switch system directly to the computer. That's I think I just basically mean any USB-C to USB-A cable. Yeah. That's kind of a big deal because uh, previously the Nintendo Switch doesn't do anything when you connect it to yeah. your computer other than charge. Unless you do, unless you have one of those hacks. Uh, so at least now the computer will, I mean, it'll use it as storage basically. I don't know if it'll let you put stuff onto it. I mean, I guess I could probably try that not. Right now. Yeah. You know what? I will try that. Uh, you read the All next right. one. All right. Uh, hold on. I lost my spot. Uh, I'm going to use my PS5 USB C cable. Ooh, controversy. Uh, users can now select what download to prioritize when they are when there are multiple downloads in progress would have been useful to me right before i started downloading all those stuff that is really uh -huh. useful because it's so annoying when i have to download a game to like stream yeah. you know on a deadline or something and uh it's doing an update for another game or something <laughs> when mario so kart annoying. 8 needs an update but you gotta review age of calamity yeah uh setting up device we're, we're setting up nintendo switch oh when there are multiple software uh, update data or downloadable content downloads in progress, users can now select which they want to download first. You can set this under download options by selecting the icon for the software you want to download first on the home menu. So Nintendo Switch didn't come up as a disc. I thought it would. Interesting. How do I, how do, I do it? Uh, saved under album. Yeah, what the hell? Where is it? It did. My computer did just say the Nintendo Switch is set up and ready to use. But you don't see it appearing anywhere as like a drive or. Nope. Did you even get like the Windows thing that says like, "Hey, how would you like to access this"? No, it just said setting up Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is set up. Maybe I have to go to album. I'm in album. What if I click on this? Sharing and editing. Post, send to smartphone, add text, copy, delete. Oh, that didn't work. I think you have to go into the Switch's settings. Oh. Uh... Uh... 
System settings. Data management. Move between system and micro SD card, quick archive, manage software, save data cloud, transfer your saved data, manage screenshots and video. Manage screenshots and video. Copy to a computer via USB connection. That is an option. Oh, okay. oh. there it is. It just, it just showed up as a device. It is, can you let me click it please? Nintendo Switch. And it looks, what is that, a Zune? <laughs> That's just a generic ass looking yeah. like, camera looking thing. All right, you click on it, album. Oh, and it just, it's just the album. So here's all my screenshots. There you go. I'm afraid to click any of these. Wow, how many screenshots do you take? Praise Yoshi. I will. I'm a Nintendo Switch content creator, okay? Fair enough. Uh, now let's try something. Uh, let's get a let's let's get a picture. Big Yosh. There he is. Oh, he's playing saxophone. <laughs> All right. We're gonna try to save this to desktop, and then we're gonna try to just drag it into my Turok folder. <laughs> nope. Doesn't let you do it. Oh wow. So it's what, read one only. way only. Can't use your switch as a drive. Yet. And then so my uh switch uh, you can't really see it. It it locks you to this screen. Connected to oh, computer, okay. and then you have to go disconnect. And then it does Interesting. That. Yeah, so that's probably so you can't like potentially like do screw it up. It's because Nintendo is too safe. Yeah. It's that's kind of annoying. Yeah. It, there, there's no need for any of that crap. Uh okay. So I mean interesting new functionality there. I mean it, yeah. it I mean that's easier than taking the micro SD card out because I used to have to turn my whole switch down just to get a screenshot or or a or a Smash Brothers gameplay off and then put it in my computer. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I would always have to edit it again because uh, Twitter just wouldn't take the uh, the 60 frames per second gameplay or something. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, anyway, well, users can now select... Oh, we did that. User icons yeah. were added. We saw that. Users can now name preset button mappings with the change button mapping feature. That's good. That's so, very cool. I think what was it update nine? We got uh, yeah, we got button remapping, which was great. That was uh, nobody expected that from Nintendo, and it was a uh, it's a uh, I'm very happy that we have that feature. So does this mean you can have like multiple different button remapping configurations, or is it still just the one? Uh, I believe this means multiple. Oh, so, that's so, cool. So, so you didn't have just one; you had one per controller, I think. Like, it would know oh. what controller you want. Oh, and you could also set it per game. That's what I was wondering. Because I remember playing Jedi Knight, and I wanted to remap the buttons, but I didn't because I thought it would be a system-wide thing. No, I think I think in the past, you could do it just one game. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Delta 9 says, can save button profiles. He also says, folders are bust. Everybody wants folders. Everybody's yeah. mad. That every time there's a new update, people are like, oh. I wanted those folders. Yeah, uh, get over it. <laughs> Brazilian Portuguese was added uh, as a support language. Yay. Yay. I think it was the Nintendo Twitter said, like, we've added Brazilian Portuguese uh, as a supported language. Ole! Is that... I'm, I think that was the Nintendo, the Nintendo of America Twitter. Is that not sp Spanish? That's Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, that's Spanish. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, that's it. That's the whole update. Yeah. So, so it, it added a lot, and nobody was expecting an update. Yeah. But there was a few more things that kind of snuck out with it. Uh, this happened before the update happened. Right. Um, this is according to my Nintendo News. Nobody else really reported on this. SNES and NES Online app updates released for Nintendo Switch Online members. So the apps for NES and SNES games. For Switch Online members updated before the system-wide update. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, version 5.0 of the Nintendo Entertainment System app and version 2.0 for the uh, Super Nintendo Online applications have been updated for Nintendo Switch Online members. There aren't any release notes for the new updates at present, and no new games have been announced just yet for the service. There's always the possibility that they are planning to release a new batch of games very soon. As always, we shall keep you posted. Uh, so... When I first saw this, I was like, oh, we're getting freaking Game Boy games. Duh. It's happening. Right. But then they released update 11.0.0. So I think this, and with that update was Nintendo Switch Online integration. So I think that's it. I think there's really nothing to this. There's no yeah. speculation here. I think it's just they needed to update these apps in order to have that little icon in the bottom left corner that says Nintendo yeah. Switch Online features. But I mean, we're due for some Game Boy games. I think Nintendo's yeah. very backed up right now and stuff that they wanted to do this year. So I think soon, early next year, I mean, I, soon we should be getting more NES games and SNES games. Yeah. But uh, I think if they're going to do a new system for the switch when did we get super nintendo games two years ago a year ago i want to say it was two years ago well then... i don't think it was two i don't think it was two years ago for on version two so it's probably like sometime last year I think it was last year. Okay. Now you're playing with power with a Nintendo Switch Online membership, gain access to a large collect- a large collection of Super Nintendo games. Yeah, this was as of release date September fifth, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Never mind then. Probably next year. All right, we got Tyler PM with eight, an eight-month subscription. Just a heart. Thank you very much, Tyler. Thank you. I heart you too. Do you think Pokemon will be included if they add Game Boy, Nintendo Switch Online? Says Burn Nuts. Uh, I feel like people would be upset if it's not. I also uh, I feel like it won't. <laughs> I, it probably won't be in like the first wave. It'll probably be like in a in a <clears throat> later like wave two or three or even four or five i would not expect it right away if it comes i think the pokemon company is working on a game boy classic type situation and after that maybe they'll do something yeah but i don't know uh what do you think about the whole doc situation what are we talking about what doc situation what doc situation explain yourself uh all right, well, that's it for the update. That's everything. That's all we got. All right. Uh, the Lost so. Superman PlayStation game has been made public. Oh. You didn't see this? I did not see this. Well, I am I know what they're talking about. I'm familiar with the story, but I did not know that it was recently made public. I had no idea about this at all until I saw this article posted yesterday. Uh, this is from Engadget. Mm-hmm. Uh, Superman 64 is a 1999 Nintendo 64 title that has the unfortunate reputation as being one of the worst games ever made. Me and Will owned this game. Did we own it? No. We rented it from Blockbuster because we saw because we liked Superman the animated series and we're like, oh, how bad could this be? It was very bad. It was very bad. Even my friggin' nine year old self. Yeah. Was like, this is not. Yeah. This not this is wrong. On ten year old. Every level. Ten. Oh, yeah. Now the lost PlayStation version of that very same game, very dreadful game, has been posted online. The original Superman 64 was designed by French developer Titus Interactive with the PlayStation port handled by its U.S. subsidiary, Blue Sky Software. They made Vector Man, did they not? They did. Yep. Vector Man's great. Yeah. Maybe Maybe this version's good. (laughs) <laughs> well, keep reading, Wolf. We'll... But when Warner Brothers pulled Titus Titus's license to use its IP for probably understandable reasons, the port was canceled. Can you look up 
a review from 1999 of this game. All right, hold on. Uh, oh, I so, think IGN still has a review up of it. Frank Sifaldi in... Sifaldi. Frank Sifaldi. Who is this? Uh, video game historian. Game history. We met him at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. He left his magazines behind before our panel. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Co-director and noisemaker gamehistory.org. He tweeted, Yeah, dude, alternate universe Superman 64, the unreleased PlayStation game planned to come out around the same time, just dropped. First time I've ever seen a video game prototype get released on DeviantArt. (laughs) It's legit released on DeviantArt. Yeah. Oh, page not found. It got taken down already. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you could just get the ROM. And your yeah. screenshots, it looks like a PlayStation game. And it actually it looks like the freaking N64 game. Yeah. Uh, he also said, and the write-up on that post is full of weird scene drama involving deleted files because people were mean and also something about publishing Resident Evil 1.5 fan fiction as a physical book. I understand about half of it. Really nostalgic early 2000s emulator drama feelings. In the lengthy post on DeviantArt, a user going by the name Richard Mandel uh, says that they won a copy of the game in an eBay auction in 2013. They say that this is, quote, not a leak. This is a release, which is incorrect. (laughs) That is, yeah. Yeah. But they held off on posting it due to some scandal in a rare ga- in the rare games community at the time. And then he's uh, Frank Cifaldi says, "By the way, yes, a demo of this game has been out for a long time. But according to the release, f- according to the file dates, this one is a full eight months later in development, so should be way more complete as a game." And Gadget continues by saying, according to Frank Cifaldi, founder of the Video Game His- History Foundation, the files are dated eight months later than the demo version, which was already in the public domain. Uh, naturally, it makes this work. Naturally, to make this work, you'll need to run an emulator. But be warned, if you try and run an unreleased port of Superman 64, you may en- wind up actually playing Superman 64. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I wonder what makes this guy think that this is a release and not a leak because i don't know because it's a it's a full game yeah that is a that is of an ip that you do not own from yeah. a developer that you were not involved with <laughs> and you are releasing it without any sort of uh 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 permission right. permission or to do it already yeah no this is this is a leak straight up so i think he I he, think he bought the some... game at an auction and yeah. that's why he thinks he owns it because he does own think... he owns the disc but he does not own the right to distribute it and i that's think why also it's not on deviant because anymore. it's like close to finished like that can that classifies it as a release in his mind because it's basically a finished product where a leak is more synonymous with uh, unfinished work. Mm -hmm. But nah, dude, you're still leaking it. This thing was never officially released in any capacity. Yeah, and I mean, mean, Blue Sky doesn't even have the right to distribute it. No. So if Blue Sky was even still around, they couldn't say. It's warped to Warner Brothers. Yeah. So... um. I remember there was a there's a video on YouTube by Matt McMuscles who actually like he chronicles like the development of Superman 64 like what happened and it was not a good development situation at all Warner Brothers actually actively uh, fought against Titus in making this game like they put on a lot of like weird restrictions that they couldn't do with the license oh. um, yeah it was it was not it was a very bad development so but he does bring up the PlayStation port of it and apparently because that port was made after and by a different studio who had a little bit more time uh the playstation version for people who have like seen it and played it is even though it's unfinished and unreleased was substantially better than the nintendo 64 version so if this is like the the latest build of the ps1 version then it is possible that it, this is actually the better version of Superman 64. Uh, I'm willing to 
find it and try it. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like a good stream idea. I'd have to be on that in order to give you all the references and stuff. Do you remember enough about Superman 64 to be able to be like, oh, this is better? Yes. Because I remember certain levels like could not be beaten mm -hmm. at all. So. Uh, I still, I mean, it looks exactly the same though. I don't know how yeah. much better this, it, it's, it's a, it's a good story to be able to be like, wow, the unreleased PlayStation version is so much better than the one we got. Yeah. But I doubt it's going to be like anything <laughs> great. Did, did you get a review up of Super yeah, so I got, what, what did I it found get a, rated? IGN rated it a 3.4. And their verdict is, having grown up with the Man of Steel, Superman for the Nintendo 64 is a huge, whopping disappointment for me. <laughs> In fact, the game is so all around poorly executed that it is downright offending to people offending to people like myself who've enjoyed the comic books, movies, television shows, and more based on, based upon the American icon. Not only is this subpar effort one of the N64's worst games, it serves as even more proof that it takes more than a solid license to make a solid game. So, normally when people say that a game is like, you know, renowned for being bad, and if it's like a retro game, usually yeah. it seems like it just didn't age well. And Superman 64 is a case where, at the time, it was a terrible game. Yeah. Uh, the GameSpot review from that time, a 1.3 out of, <laughs> out of 10. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, the only Superman compliment I can say, I can find to say is that flying beats walking. If I've been in any way unclear up to this point, let me state it simply. This is easily the worst game I've ever played. <laughs> to steal a line outright from a film review in San Francisco Bay Guardian, it serves no purpose other than to firmly establish the bottom of the barrel. I wonder, I'm going to look it up, how long to beat. Because <laughs> I kind of want to, what if I do a stream where I, where I so, try, to, try to just beat I know the game? So I know a lot of people don't get past the first part of Superman 64 because the first part of the game is Superman flying through rings, the infamous fly through rings, and then you have to do like a, a two second uh, like save somebody mission and then go back to flying through rings. It's very difficult. People give up right from there. I actually remember like playing that over and over again until I beat it. Mm-hmm. I have beaten the first level of Superman 64. I do not recommend it. I think um, you gave me the controller for that. I think that was one I? of those times where you where you gave me the controller and you're like, you you try it then, and then I did it. No, no, I've I re like look. I am not opposed to admitting when <laughs> I gave you the controller, but I specifically remember this like being determined to get to the end. Uh, the how long to beat main story? Only three and a half hours. Yeah, I imagine there not being much to this. This might be a stream. A main plus extras, six and a half. There is a multiplayer mode. Really? Yeah. What do you do in that? I think it's cart racing. What? Yeah. Like, well, like you, you no, can't look, just it's... you can't just say that. You can't just <laughs> say, you can't just yeah, it's cart racing. <laughs> The game includes t uh, two multiplayer modes, a racing mode and a battle mode that can be played with up to four people. In battle mode, players must defeat their opponents by throwing various weapons and items at them. In the racing mode, players control a spaceship and rings shoot from the backside of one opponent. Okay, I see the battle mode. I don't see this other mode at all. A spaceship and rings shoot out of it? Yeah. I remember the spaceship. Oh, wait, is this it? No. Oh. Wait. I don't know. I'm, I'm I behind. This is it? This must be it. It's first person. Yeah, this is it. This is definitely it. Okay. This YouTube video. Wait, but you're shooting each other, though. Yeah, no, yeah. this Yeah, this is it. Oh, wow. All right. That is very dumb. I also remember uh, this is based on Superman, the animated series, probably the best Superman adaptation ever. Um, it had the voice of Tim Daly as Superman, 
But then it also had somebody else provide the voice of Superman at the same time. What? It had Tim Daly. Um, basically, Tim Daly basically said, "There's Superman says two lines in this whole game. <laughs> there's Tim Daly saying, and there's no time to waste. And then there's the other guy saying, this is a job for Superman. The oh. two people sound nothing alike. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this just did, Will. Uh, oh. This up is apparently two days old. But uh, the chat was reminding <laughs> me right now, or letting me know, that apparently the Switch dock has been discontinued in Europe. Huh. So this is a rumor. Uh, and okay. it's according to my Nintendo News. There's a giant, big-ass render or picture, high-res picture of the, of the Switch dock. There it is. This Nintendo Switch dock has apparently been out of stock for quite a while now in the United Kingdom. And today, a Reddit user reached out to the company to find out when it will be available again. The user received a response from the Nintendo official UK store who told him that the Nintendo Switch dock has now been discontinued. This is clearly a strange decision by Nintendo, but it could further hint to the rumor that the company is planning on updated Switch for early 2021. Uh, this mm. remains a rumor at present. So that would also imply an updated doc. Uh, Dear Saeed40, thank you for contacting us and placing an inquiry. Uh, a member of our Nintendo customer support team has looked into your inquiry and added a response for your records. Your original inquiry was, I don't need to read that. Uh, I'm real sorry, but we have discontinued the Nintendo Switch doc set in the UK. Therefore, our UK store will no longer stock this on our site. So... Uh, I'll roll this back to, uh, I think probably a year ago when there were stock issues for the Nintendo switch dock here in America. Yeah. Uh, and they, they didn't even list it on their site anymore. It was linking to best buys insignia doc. So, uh, it, they never straight up said that it was discontinued in America at the time. But it mm -hmm. certainly seemed like it was. And I was about to make a video on it. And then it miraculously reappeared uh, on, on yeah. the Nintendo Switch site. So it was... it All traces of it disappeared for like maybe a week and a half. And then it just reappeared. So yeah. uh, I, I... I mean, here they're straight up saying that it's discontinued. But I don't know if... That just might be a Nintendo support representative being like, I don't know. I mean, they're not here, yeah. so I guess we they're, haven't gotten them in a while. Certainly something fishy going on with the docks and even with like charging cables and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, it's it's weird that a peripheral that's like very essential to the, the Switch just isn't being made anymore. So there has to be like a reason for it and why they're not saying N you know, Nintendo has stock issues and they also have communication issues. Yeah. And I think this is both of those things, you know, smashing together at the same time. Yeah. Sorry with 100 bits. Saeed40 was talking about this in your Discord, uh, posted screenshots of the UK doc. Wow. We had a famous person in the Discord. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I mean, I do think that they're making a new doc. I, th I think if, if we get that Switch iteration that we're supposed to get next year, probably like March, I feel like yeah. there will be a, a, an iteration of the doc. But I think that this is a case of stock issues and communication issues. Uh, it's like the perfect storm of uh, nonsense. Because we, again, yeah. this has happened before in America. They just straight up didn't say that it was uh, uh, discontinued. It just had all of the messaging that it was discontinued without straight up saying that it was discontinued. Uh, picky gamer. Thank you for the four months. Keep up the great work. And thank you very much. Do you guys think a new dock that is upgraded or a new switch? Uh, I think both. I think both. It, it won't be a new, uh, Oh, Saeed is in the chat. Yeah. Wow. So we have how, celebrity in our chat. How oh, has the newfound celebrity uh, uh, affected you in your daily life, Saeed? <laughs> Saeed, what's your take on 
this on 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 the the uh switch doc being discontinued oh here's your actual post from from reddit this means for those who live in the uk and want to switch doc needs to import buy used or go third party let's see if it's on the nintendo america site nintendo right. store switch doc he said honestly annoying <laughs> <laughs> i don't blame you all right i'm on this i'm on the american site uh charger 20 bucks the the wii u and wii land adapter and switch <laughs> 25 bucks this is oh, yeah, not i mean it's usb this is not the switch just... land adapter <laughs> i'd imagine they're all the same though it's just a usb 2 ethernet will how dare you the the one for the for the switch is usb 3.0 and it doesn't say it on the <laughs> on the device itself because the switch doesn't support 3.0 yet or it might i don't even know what the deal is if it ended up supporting it but well, apparently right switch here, doesn't, and apparently it's got the switch doesn't support docs anymore oh i thought the inside was blue it's not i can't even show it yes i can i thought the inside was blue it's not but I'm pretty sure this is 3.0 and it just doesn't say 3.0. Right. I have a video I want to go watch one of my old stupid videos. Um, anyway, where's the dock? Oh, there it That's is. The oh, refurbished. The refurbished one was there before. Yes. But the refurbished ones are usually a pretty good deal. Yeah, I recommend the refurbished one. If you need another dock, I recommend just getting the refurbished. But it doesn't come with a charger, which is a problem. Yeah. Um, Yo, they don't have a Nintendo Switch dock. Like, hello? It should be right here. Yeah. Hello. Uh, how about Amazon? Uh, that I guarantee the first thing you get on Amazon will be like a third party. Yep. Yep. The right. Amazon oh. Basic makes the dock. Believe it or not, new screen TV dock station for Nintendo Switch console, $60. What is this about? In stock December 16th. Just look at the brand. Yeah. Why? This is fishy. Official Nintendo good for charging your Switch tablet and projecting to the TV. You don't say. Includes <laughs> dock only without charging cable. Oh, okay. So this has been opened and yeah, sold separately, I guess. Okay, so no... Yeah, so it's, this is what I mean. Like, I, it, I think it's been discontinued here also. Yeah. Best Buy has it only pre... Oh, sorry. GameStop only has pre-owned available... Yeah, uh, so something's, uh, but it's been like this for a long time. Yeah. This is just the first time Nintendo has actually said, "Hey, uh, you know." Target just says sold out. We don't have refurb store in UK. Oh, you would have to get it from a third party. Well, that sucks. Yeah, that's this is another problem. Nintendo strongly advises you don't use third party docks. And now they're forcing everybody to use third-party docs. Yeah. That is very annoying. Um, but, I mean, we saw they linked to the Insignia doc, so get an Insignia doc. If you want. Or they, I think yeah. they rebranded it to Rocketfish now. I think it's called the Rocketfish doc. I think so. I think they are doing it because tons of people buy docs from Amazon and get the chip to make the portable doc by Bastop and just return it. Oh, Take it apart and then put it back in the box and return it. That's uh, that's terrible. Gummy. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, uh, Super Nintendo World, world, Ooh. world, 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 world. Uh, the theme park opens February fourth in the Nihon. Uh, this is from Polygon. So this is the first time we're actually getting a date on when Super Nintendo yes. World is going to happen. I'm going to play the Twitter video. Could you uh could you do a little read? Uh yeah, let me just everything's running slow. Super Nintendo World, part of the larger Universal Studios Japan theme park, 
will open February 4th, Universal Studios announced Monday. The theme park is said to be opening with two main rides, a Mario Kart ride and a Yoshi's Adventure ride. In the announcement Monday, the company showed off the Mario Kart portion of the world. Mario Kart, the Mario Kart ride will be called Koopa's Challenge, which kicks off inside Bowser's Castle. Universal Studios published some of its own photos of the ride, but you can watch a video tour of the attraction via Bloomberg. Here it is. Which is what Bob is currently showing on the on your TV screen. Well, so if it's done... Well, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. Like, they're I've, not going to open it now. <laughs> I think it's been done for a while, because wasn't this supposed to open, like, in the summer? True. Pandemic. I yes. forgot. Uh, Bloomberg reporter K- uh, Kurumi Mori said the ride uses AR headsets, but is not a freewheeling ride. It's on rails. Each cart has four seats with their own steering wheels, uh, Maury said the cart is definitely on rails, but that riders are given some control to collect items and throw shells like in the video game. She noted that Bowser's Castle is where the ride begins, but there were multiple levels to race through, including a lava and underwater themed worlds, uh, as well as the famous Rainbow Road. These are the first big details uh, we've received on the major attractions, but in October, Universal Studios showed off a restaurant and shopping area at the osaka based theme park. I missed that announcement. <laughs> I did too. Uh, players will wear ma- uh, magnetic wristbands in the park, which let people engage in the park's different levels, which adds up with scores. How this works exactly is still unclear. Super Nintendo World was originally slated to open in the summer, but was delayed due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Aww. Universal Studios Osaka itself reopened to the locals June 8th at a limited capacity. Mori noted that Universal Studios Osaka will take special measures because of the pandemic with mandatory social distancing and extra sanitization uh, for the Riot headsets. Uh, This is what the headset looks like. It's uh, it looks like giant glasses with a with a Mario hat on top, like a visor version of Mario's hat. And the car looks like a Mario Kart, except it's four seats. There you go. That's pretty cool. So it's a quadruple dash. Uh, I need to look up Jeff Keighley. Uh, he had a good. He had a good. Uh, he shared a, a video of uh, the whole world. Look at this freaking thing. Oh that yeah, looks, I remember seeing that. Look at everything moving. This looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go very bad. I want to yeah. do. I want to do this. Uh, uh, we're not allowed into Japan until at least April. All right. Uh, I hope you can wait. I think I want to go in August. I think I want to spend a month in August in Japan. Jeez. Um. But everything's expensive if you want to stay in Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, Jor Pod, thank you for the three months. I appreciate you. So, so, I mean, I'm not a theme park person. I don't like rides and stuff. I don't like roller coasters. But, uh, I mean, this is Nintendo World. Yeah, I mean... You, you think I could do everything in one day? Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to be that big of a... I mean, it'll be a big park, but I don't, I'm sure it'll be... You know, manageable in a day. I'd say maybe if they have Fast Pass, get that, though. Oh, of course. Um, I mean, yeah, it's in Universal. It's not like, I don't, I mean, from the look of that, I mean, it looks big, but it doesn't look like a a whole, you know, world in, in Disney. Yeah. Oh, look at Denny says, I got connections. Really? I got you, Bob. Uh, I mean, let me know, dude. Were you going to say something? I said, I was going to say, I'm sure like Galaxy's Edge, uh, at Disney World is like bigger than that. But even that's like manageable in a day is that open yet i mean is that reopened (laughs) uh so disney world is in orlando because florida has no rules uh disneyland in california is actually still shut down because california is like on on lockdown again right um but disney world in florida has a strict mask policy um and i remember reading somewhere most of the time people 
honestly forget that they're not wearing it and just put it back on. But they have had to drag some people out of the park <laughs> kicking and screaming because they will not wear a mask. <laughs> I mean, I believe it. It's freaking Florida. Yeah. Chris, yep. Chris BX, you get that Unicorn Doom guy yet? Actually, yes. Uh, I don't have it in my room, though. It's in the other room. Uh, Sega just showed off a prototype handheld for the first time ever. I have not seen this. What the hell is this? Uh, I've, it's... It looks like a Nomad. I think, yeah. It looks like a Nomad oh, and a Game Gear at the same time. It's called the Venus Yes, because remember, they used to name things after planets. Uh, oh, yeah. Sega turned 60 this year, and the company has been celebrating that fact in a wide range of ways, uh, one of which is a special video history lesson which runs through the company's home hardware lineage. This particular seminar was held by Sega producer and manager Hiroyuki Miyazaki and takes us from the early Ooh. days of 1983's SG-1000 released in Japan on the same day as the Nintendo Famicom. Oh, boy. Uh, what right a terrible up to mistake Sega's, that was. <laughs> yeah. Right up to Sega's, Sega's final home console, the Dreamcast. Ooh, they have English subtitles for this. Is it real English subtitles or is it fake? Uh, it's real. It's real English subtitles. Oh, video. It's 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, during the talk, Miyazaki goes into detail on how Sega was fond of using the names of planets as internal code names for its systems, the exception being the Saturn, which retained its code name right up to the launch. Uh, he speaks about the Sega Nomad, uh, a portable Mega Drive system, which was released in North America in 1995 and was Sega's final attempt to wrestle control of the handheld market away from the Nintendo Game Boy. Spoiler, it didn't work, but the machine is great if a little battery hungry. Uh, a nice oh, little is. surprise. A nice little surprise was Miyazaki showing off a prototype of the console that has up until now never been seen in public still retaining the venus code name the prototype nomad is rather fetching and arguably more attractive than the oddly shaped system we actually got uh, uh i'm a i'm a <laughs> i'm gonna have to stop them right there <laughs> so so this is a nomad is what this is yeah, uh, this is the Nomad prototype. So the Nomad is a little, it's like a weird little trapezoid looking thing. Yeah, it, it's got like this weird slant and like the where the D-pad is, it's like, it's got a weird D-pad, first of all. Second of all, like that's that side of it is curved, like completely round, but the other side is like flat. I, and I, the button, I, yeah, I, as you can I, see, like the buttons are like jelly bean buttons. Yeah, I will say the buttons and the D-pad are much better looking on this guy. Yeah. But... I don't think this is much prettier than the actual Nomad we got. I think they're both I feel like if, pretty ugly. If the Venus was in black, it would look a lot better. This yeah. is some weird like silver thing. The, the the Dreamcast is the only Sega console that came out in white. All the all the rest were black, and there's a reason for it because they looked good in black. Mm -hmm. Is that the whole so, article? Yeah. Uh, here's the Nomad. Is that it? Yeah. No, I'm looking at the video right now. Oh. Oh, wow. The most successful of the Sega consoles, the Genesis, was named after Earth. <laughs> oh, well, they should have packed it up right there, Well, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, recently, I discovered a prototype of it. This is the first time to be shown publicly. Uh, and there it is. You can see its code name is printed on the body here, Venus. Ooh. Uh, this portable console was released in 1995. He's talking about the Nomad. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's an interesting color for the Saturn, too. That looks like... I think that was a Japanese-only color. Okay. Uh, I want to watch that later. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, now we got some quickies. Yeah. Doom uh, Eternal's Doom coming Eternal. to Switch. Yes, uh, December 8th. The Switch version of Doom Eternal was created by Panic Button, uh, the studio who previously ported over Doom 2016, Wolfenstein 2, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Um, available only as a digital download. No physical edition is being produced or planned. The game will take up 18.8 gigabytes of storage on the Switch. Uh, it will be available on the eShop from, uh, from midnight Eastern Standard Time. The release is essentially the same version 
uh, released on PC and console earlier this year, including a 2v1 battle mode multiplayer suite, as well as the main single player campaign. While that while those remain unchanged, the Switch version does support gyroscopic motion controls. I'm that, throwing that, it up. Hold on. The, the, panic uh, Activision should call up Panic Button and be like, "Listen, guys, we need I a little don't bit understand of help. Why they haven't already? Yeah, we need a little help uh, making our not even getting Warzone on the Switch. We just need help making the file size a little smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I looked. I think Doom Eternal on like uh, Xbox One or something is like forty something gigs. Jeez, that's still You're tiny. Not. That's pretty small. Yeah. So, so I want to note that. Um, there was a rumor like a week ago that Doom Eternal was canceled completely. Yeah. Uh, I forgot. Well, oh, I think it was GameStop was saying that it was canceled. Yeah. And and then Bethesda didn't help things by saying uh, we have nothing to announce at this time instead of saying, no, yeah. it's still coming out. So what happened was the physical version was discontinued. Right. Um, but the you could still get it digitally. So this isn't the end of the world. It sucks for people who are all physical, but uh, yeah, too bad. I I don't think um, the first Doom sold that great on the Switch. It the I mean the first Doom came out like two years after, mm-hmm. and was like kind of just like far like not farted out obviously, but like they just released it with like very little fanfare, right? And I don't think that really helps matters. I mean, I they didn't expect it to do too good. But yeah. I, like I probably met expectations, maybe even exceeded expectations. But I think yeah. it got, I, I think it sold like under a hundred thousand within the first month. It was like very very low. I mean, still for a, uh, a third party hardcore shooter to sell that much on the Switch, that's still a pretty big deal. That's still not bad. I mean, yeah, I, think I just mostly it was a proof of concept because then they Wolfenstein Two came out closer to the release date um that it did on ps4 and xbox one and then wolfenstein youngblood was day and date with the other consoles mm-hmm. uh but panic button's doing good work here they they, they yeah. make they make good ports especially for the switch mm-hmm. uh so everything they do uh, you can expect it to run very good mary maker one is going goodbye uh yes everybody uh, take off your hats and a moment of silence for Bob's only reason for keeping the Wii U around. So this is this is actually from the Nintendo support page. Uh, as of March 31st, 2021, we are killing Mario. He's going to die. <laughs> That's it. He's done. I actually, I think I had a dream that Mario, they were actually just getting, they were not, they were going to stop making Mario games on march 31st like they're, entirely they were like we're just done with mario he's no more mario well games. i mean they're <laughs> stopping a lot of things on march 31st that are mario related it's yeah it's scary like i maybe i I think that was a nightmare that i had and i'm remembering it all now yes. anyway it will no longer be possible to upload courses in Super Mario Maker game for the Wii U system. On the same day, the Super Mario Maker bookmark website will also close, which should be available for Mario Maker 2, but Nintendo sucks. As a result, Super Mario Maker for the Wii U system will be removed from the Nintendo eShop on January 12th, 2021, said Emoticon. Please note that uh, depending on the circumstances, these services may be discontinued earlier than the above mentioned date. Uh, s- services that will end the ability to upload courses from the Wii U version, the Super Mario Maker bookmark website. Due to this, the following features uh, within the software's course world will also become av- unavailable. Updating the ranking of liked courses. Looking up the your bookmarked courses. Okay. An error message will be displayed. It will still be possible to play courses that were uploaded before the course upload feature was discontinued. And to re-download the game after its removal from the eShop, there will be no impact on the Super Mario Maker 2 game. Which is important because when this was reported, everybody thought that they meant Mario Maker 2. Yeah. Um. Honestly, this isn't as big of a deal as I thought. Uh, you just can't upload courses. You can still play courses. I thought they right. were going to get rid of the network features entirely, and that was upsetting. But uh, you can still play the game. 
I yeah. think that Mario Maker 1, th there's, there's only two things that make Mario Maker 2 better than Mario Maker 1. There's the, uh, the, the world's builder, which was added right. way later. Yeah. And, uh, something else I don't remember. Slopes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything else that was added was really, they actually took a lot of features away. Instead of building really? on what they had, they took away more features than I think they added when the game hmm. first came out, at least. Like, right, right. think about all of the, uh, the, the question mark mushrooms, all of the, yeah. the oh, costumes right, yeah. that you could have. They got rid mm -hmm. of all of those. And those were a big deal. They, they a whole yeah. level themes were based around that. Uh, the hundred Mario challenge was, I think better than the, uh, than the endless challenge. Right. At first I thought it would, the endless challenge would be fine, but it's nice to have a goal to live up to multiplayer is awesome and i love having multiplayer but i would never recommend anybody play the multiplayer <laughs> i like it i think it's fun but uh yeah. you have to suffer through a lot of terrible uh net code in order to get a good match so <sighs> all right uh so that's it so no if you have any courses on your wii u finish them and upload them now yeah and if it, uh, people are saying they should let you upload these courses to Mario Maker 2, uh, that would break a lot of the courses because Mario Maker 2 has just like slight changes that yeah. might break certain levels. Um, Yuri Geller allows Nintendo to make uh, Kadabra cards again. So magician and known uh, fraud... Asshole. <laughs> Yuri Geller, um, famous for bending spoons with his mind, um, quote unquote. Apparently, back when uh, Pokemon Cars first became a thing, he sued Nintendo. Uh, two decades ago, magician and illusionist and fraud Yuri Geller sued Nintendo in a California court for its Kadabra Pokemon card, alleging that the company used his likeness to create the character. You see, Geller is known for his spoon bending tricks, just like Kadabra. Wow, now, they, look this, they look so similar. It's amazing. Now, Geller is apologizing for the lawsuit in which he claimed Nintendo turned Nintendo turned him into an evil occult Pokemon character and stole his identity by using his name and his signature image, according to the BBC, back in 2000. The lawsuit was dismissed in 2003. He reportedly filed several lawsuits globally, according to The Guardian. Uh, I am truly sorry for what I did 20 years ago, Geller wrote on Twitter. Kids and grown-ups, I am releasing. I'm releasing the ban. It is now up to Nintendo to bring my Kadabra Pokemon card back. Uh, it will probably be one of the rarest cards now. Much energy and love to all. Did, did he? Uh, did he call it my my hashtag Kadabra my, hashtag Pokemon card back? Uh, what later an he asshole? He published a video where. Where he sort sorted through a large suitcase full of Kadabra memorabilia, including Japanese cards and English cards. The Japanese card the Japanese card is called Young Geller, which is very close to Geller's name. Oh well. He's also got a number of figurines and toys stuffed away in that bag. Geller told gaming site website The Gamer that he received tremendous amounts of email from Pokemon fans asking him to drop the case and allow Nintendo to bring back Kadabra. He added that Nintendo representatives picked up his letter. Pokemon Company told Polygon it has nothing to share at this time. When asked about Geller and reprinting uh, Kadabra cards, maybe Nintendo will bring reprinting, will begin reprinting Kadabra cards, but maybe it won't. Nintendo and the Pokemon Company do at least now have Geller's blessing. I, I don't think a blessing is enough. I think that uh, they're very uh, careful with legal yeah. stuff. I don't think I think they're going to completely ignore this. <laughs> So I, it's the the free, there's Abra and then there's Kadabra and then there's Alakazam. There's three evolutions of that character. Mm -hmm. And in Japan, they have different names based on different magicians. And Kadabra happened to be you know have Geller in his name. Uh, but I mean, if this lawsuit kept getting dismissed, I don't think this is. I don't think Nintendo really cares whether what Yuri Geller thinks or not mm -hmm. of Kadabra. 
I mean, they probably were not releasing Kadabra cards just so that they could avoid another headache. But I'm sure they could have done this at any time, and like they they wouldn't have it wouldn't have been a problem. So so, so this whole story, I was like, wow, this guy's an asshole. There's no like, look, he doesn't have a mustache. This dude's got a mustache. <laughs> all, it's literally just the spoon. That's it. And all of yeah. the pictures when you look up Yuri Geller, it's literally mostly just of uh, Kadabra. You know. Um, yeah. So, uh, but then you said his name in Japanese was Young Geller, and that, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's a little scary. I was gonna play his uh, Twitter video, but uh, I feel like he, uh, he might copyright strike the video, <laughs> so I don't want to do it. Uh, also, I should note that uh, in Japan, it's pronounced Yungera because they don't have that. Yungera. L. Yeah. Yeah. So it's even then but, it's not really. But his name in Japanese would be Geta. So it it, True. it doesn't it doesn't matter. There's no they were still trying to use his name. But but the, all, don't all of the evolutions have a spoon? Uh f- hold on. I I got I got Abra and no Abra doesn't and Alakazam. Alakazam has spoons. Yeah, so like that's that's what I'm that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, come on, like just because you're the spoon guy doesn't mean that they cared about you, you know. Spoon man. Oh well, you Sorry. Gonna, you, you did Sorry. too similar to the song. You're gonna <laughs> trigger the content ID. I, I also want to bring up that one time Yuri Ge- Yuri Geller uh, is the type of magician who claimed that his him bending spoons with his mind was real, like he could really <laughs> do it. And and it's not a magic thing. Yeah, no, he actually had psychic powers. Um, he went on Johnny Carson one time and was going to do the trick. But Johnny Carson said, oh, no, use these spoons that we bought specifically for you to bend. And he couldn't do it. Of course. He's <laughs> like, oh, no, I can't. I'm not, feel- I'm not feeling very well. I can't, I can't bend these spoons. That's not good. That's not yeah, good for you. No, that's very bad. He, he, uh, he, he. He's the type of magician who would say, like, I can really do this. And magicians, for the most part, don't try to, like, pretend they're wizards. No, they say it's a trick. I tricked you. It's, it's I a gotcha. trick. Yes. So anytime a magician comes out and says, like, this is real magic, other magicians go, nah, fuck you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, this is, you put this here. How how Nintendo shares tips on how to keep your your Switch a Joy-Con and Joy-Con germ free. <laughs> I'm just reading this part. Do not use alcohol yeah, that I, is not intended for disinfectant disinfection, such as for fuel. What? It may damage the equipment. What? Do not use alcohol that is not intended for oh, disinfection. Oh, I, I I put a comma there in my brain. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So you could. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. I understand. Uh, do not apply disinfect it directly to the device or immerse the device in disinfectant. Moisture that, uh, contained in the alcohol disinfected may get inside the equipment and may break it down. Uh, basically, just use isopropyl alcohol. They say 70%, but you can use up to 90 That's probably better for it. After, well, you also don't want to ruin the paint job. Right. After disinfection, make sure that it is completely dry before use. If you use it when it is not dry, the device may be damaged. Also, you're gonna you're getting alcohol all over yourself. Yeah. If the device breaks down without observing these precautions, you may be charged for your repair. I mean, what what are you gonna rat on yourself and say that you use yeah. uh, alcohol? Well, they have ways to tell if it's like liquid damaged. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. I need to send my Joy-Con back because uh, the buttons are being wonky. Oh yeah? oh, yeah? Have you experienced Drift yet? No. I'll tell you what I did experience, Will. Last night, I dropped... I spilled a whole thing of cold brew all over my keyboard. And I fried <laughs> the whole keyboard. And all my desk mat and everything. So, le- I had a deadline for a video yeah. last night. And I had to... Uh, rem- I had a remote into my computer with my laptop and use my laptop as a keyboard. Wow. And then uh, today I went to Best Buy and got a cheapo keyboard. Because I, ha- I already pre-ordered another keyboard, <laughs> but it doesn't come out till January. So I didn't want to get like a nice keyboard. Right. And I also needed one right now. 
because I have things to do like this. Yeah. Uh, and so but, I just got like a cheap I mean, thirty five dollar. You still Best got a forty dollar keyboard. Thirty five. They don't make cheaper keyboards than that. Look at, at Best Buy. Look at Best Buy. I get the Insignia one for like fifteen bucks, but this is small. I need a small. I got don't got a lot of room here, Will. Right. I think I could show it maybe. Why is this? Is that not on? Hello. Hello. <laughs> is this not on? Is our is the the unboxing cam not working? I guess. Oh, it's not plugged in. I'm stupid. <laughs> Don't mind me. I went to Target today because apparently the Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian and Child 2-Pack is a Target exclusive. And uh, it said that they were in stock, but I went there and I asked the teenager and he said that they are not in stock. So they are liars. Uh, I'm very mad at Target right now. The Star Wars Black Series what now? Uh, Mandalorian and Child two pack oh it's a target exclusive you know the two figures everybody would want <laughs> the most basic figures that is have. that is very stupid yeah did uh, you see the last episode of mandalorian because now the child has a name i still have not seen anything from the mandalorian uh uh i saw half of last season that's basically it you just disappoint me. Anyway, here's the keyboard. It's a red dragon. Uh, it's tiny and it's wired, and I don't really need it to be wireless. Uh, but my pro my old keyboard it was a key cron and it had really short keys. Right. These are very these are normal like clicky keys, you know. So so it's a uh, it's, it's very loud. Yeah. But it feels nice. Thirty five bucks. There you go. And now I have a I backup get, keyboard. I need to get. A better like wireless keyboard for like my setup because i use this thing and it's way too small i was gonna buy that i was like because i thought that one looked cool the white version of that yeah. but then i was worried because it says multimedia keyboard and i was worried that uh it was gonna be like not normal sized it's i mean multimedia usually means it's much smaller than this because you're supposed to use it for a tv mm -hmm. but like th this is just basically a portable keyboard it's about the same size as like my laptop keyboard but i don't like it because the buttons are smaller than a laptop keyboard yeah i don't so i need i mean i needed a daily use keyboard for the next yeah. month or two <laughs> i need I to i need to like rearrange my desk anyway yeah you got those monitors yeah i did uh marvel i think i'm giving one to my wife though <laughs> Marvel's Avengers hasn't recouped its development costs yet. Uh, this so, is the game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I th when Marvel's I saw Avengers... this, when I saw this in the keep, I thought it, you said <laughs> you wrote Avengers hasn't recouped its costs. I was like, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, the movie. No, the movie recouped its costs many times over. The game, on the other hand, Marvel's Avengers sales have been lower than expected, and the game hasn't yet recouped its development costs leading to an estimated 7 billion yen uh, operating loss in Square Enix's HD game segment uh, during the last financial quarter. 7 billion yen is roughly the equivalent of $67 million US. Company president Yusuke Matsud Matsude? Did I do that right? Yosuke Matsude. Matsude. Uh, explained in a newly translated results briefing, sales of Marvel's Avengers were lower than anticipated than we expected and unable to completely offset the amortization of the game's development costs. Matt's Day. Yosuke Matt's Day. Matt's Day. Ga Matt's games Day. Analyst, <laughs> games analyst David Gibson uh, previously explained that the company sold 60% of its planned units and that the numbers implied the game cost around $100 million to make. Responding to an investor's question on the subject, Matsuda ex uh, clarified that had Avengers not been released in that quarter, the company would have made a profit. That comes down to both development and marketing costs. In addition to the amortization of the game's development costs, another significant factor associated with the title uh, was the fact that we undertook a major advertising campaign 
at the time of its launch to make up for the delays in our marketing res efforts resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. There are, a, there are a certain amount of development costs still to be amor amortized in uh, Q3, but we want to recoup it by growing our sales going forward. Matsuda does, doesn't offer concrete plans, but said uh, the hope is that updates will help drive new sales. We hope to make up for slow initial sales by offering ample additional content to grow our sales. Uh, last week, developer Crystal Dynamics announced the, the December release date for its first post-launch uh, hero and campaign announced another and potentially teased another hero to come beyond that. Uh, so I saw an article that said uh, people were upset that uh, the post-launch stuff had stuff like Kate Bishop Hawkeye that nobody cares about. Um, all right. Those people can go to hell. Kate Bishop is the best Hawkeye. I know. Everybody I know. I know that she's great, but she's not exactly mainstream. <laughs> you know? I, this this game is just so weird. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's such a bizarre thing because the, the the very first impression people got of this game was that this looked like a knockoff of the the movie version of the Avengers. Mm -hmm. Like straight up. The characters look like weird stunt doubles. The the costume designs look like bad action figures. Um it wasn't really clear what type of game it was gonna be. You know, over over like the few months, like it started to look a little better and it became more clear. It was like it was like a had soul style combat and it was gonna be a multi branching uh story and Kamala Khan was gonna be in it. Um, but then like closer to release date, all of a sudden now it's a destiny style game where online multiplayer is the focus and it, it, there's a loot grind system to it. And you can unlock all this other crap or pay for it with microtransactions. They don't do anything. They just look cool. Uh, and all this other weird stuff. And then Spider-Man is going to be a PS uh, four exclusive character because why not? Uh, it's just it's it's a very weird game that nobody really thought through. It, I mean, when we first saw it, I had no idea that it was going to be a, a multiplayer. Like I don't think uh, anybody like, did. If, and we knew there were we knew that it we looked knew there weird. Would be co we knew there would be co op missions, but we didn't. The, we yeah, I think everybody just thought those would be like extra side missions, like the the spec ops mode from call of duty modern warfare 2 mm -hmm. you know what i'm talking about uh yes you remember yes, that yes, mode? Yes, yes. yeah They're like just like that like fun little side missions you can do with your friend or whatnot we didn't know that would be the actual main focus of the game and the 10-hour campaign was really just the bonus mission i uh, i i think it's clear that this game was supposed to be a single player game and then uh somebody high up was like no nah, you're doing uh long yeah. living uh you know uh multiplayer game which is crazy yeah. because like imagine thinking that you're done with development in like a year and then all of a sudden they're like oh no we're gonna be developing this game for another three years <laughs> yeah uh and that sucks because crystal dynamics had made you know the the tomb raider reboot series and they didn't do shadow of the tomb raider even though i heard that one was pretty good um because they've moved over to make this mm -hmm. so imagine if they like had made shadow of the tomb raider and made the game that they wanted to make we wouldn't have gotten this game but square enix probably would have had a much higher profit margin uh this game got a 67 on metacritic which is uh not great but it's also not awful is that the worst I mean, uh, there are i'll note that, that got 67 and sold better anthem got a 54 yeah I would have played this if uh, it wasn't so divisive. Like I, I, uh, I was a little interested, but people were yeah. saying things like, you know, uh, Destiny style, and like, uh, and that that was giving me Division vibes. Yeah. I love Destiny. I, 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 I would love to play another Destiny like game, but I don't think Avengers is the type of franchise you can just slap a Destiny style game onto. Right. Like when people want to play an Avengers game, they want to play a 10 hour campaign you know it, it could be multiplayer but it would have to be like M marvel ultimate alliance where everybody plays the campaign together you know mm -hmm. 
Uh, this article referenced uh, David Gibson. What which industry analyst is that? Uh, him, I don't know. I keep I have I've to remind of myself. It, it's not comic book legend Dave Gibbons. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, just making sure this isn't one of the ones that uh, said some dumb stuff. I, I'm not familiar with him. I, uh, I do know, like, this weekend, like, we were talking, my, my friends and I were talking about all the different game sales that were happening, and we were, we Avengers was, like, on sale for, like, 26 bucks, the, the base version, not any of the deluxe versions, although those were on sale, too. And we were all debating it, and ultimately we decided not to get it, because 26 bucks was still too expensive you're not gonna play it that much you know no i i I would play the single player campaign but i'm going to wait until it is like less than 20 oh that reminds me i should have a rogue uh star wars squadrons i keep wanting to call it rogue squadron or or whatever um i should have that somewhere over here uh so apparently gamestop yesterday sold it uh for xbox digital download for 20 bucks snag that <laughs> oh yeah well that's cheaper because of the uh yeah. shipping i'm mad yeah. that it was up on amazon because that's free shipping yeah uh all right soren star seeker with 100 bits hi wolf bros long time fan i had a dream that will was terminally ill and that's why wolf <laughs> live had to end glad he's doing okay now i'm glad he is too since your dream <laughs> yeah uh that is I can assure you that is not the reason that Wolf didn't let no. it. No. Uh, I am fine. Unless having a child is a terminal illness, which some may uh, some may say that. I, I've I've given my child a brand new nickname. I call her the Chaos Walker. Because <laughs> all she does is cause chaos wherever yes. she goes. Um All right. It's time, Will. You know what time it is. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Wow. Uh, here we go. We got uh, a tweet from Farah. Farah F G O. It's a it's a screenshot of uh, what's that show? The chess show. Oh, uh, Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit. But you might notice something's a little different. <laughs> There's she's playing Yu-Gi-Oh. There's a Yu-Gi-Oh poster in the background. She's got Yu-Gi-Oh cards hidden in her hand, and she's got a little uh, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, YCS sticker on her shirt. I would totally watch that show if it was about a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. Have you seen? I I tweeted it. Uh, I retweeted it a while ago. I think. Um, oh, that should have been the tweet of the week that week. This uh, I I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to find it, but it somebody there's Yu-Gi-Oh VR. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And somebody just did the absolute best, like uh, they're just messing around in Yu-Gi-Oh VR, and it was it was so funny. Is this it? I saw oh, this is it. I'm gonna play it. I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional cards from my deck! That's not what it does. Roll my dice! (laughs) That is what it does. Pot of Greed! Draw three. I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional cards from my deck! And I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional cards from my deck! Then I play Magic Force! Which allows me to play Pot of Greed once again to draw three (laughs) additional cards from my deck! You know he's right. And I attack. All right, that's enough for that. Uh, it's just, it's just that over. And then at the end, he, the guy's like, "That's not what it does." And then another guy goes, "That's what it does." And he goes, "That's what it do, Yugi." Uh, I don't know. I love who the, the internet. Original. Oh, Way Wayner Adio TV. It's from the original video. I'll link it in the chat. It's a very. I watched the whole thing. It's, it's freaking hysterical. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, now we talk to you, people. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you left a comment on last week's version of the podcast over on Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments so we will get to them when we are done to everybody else. 
We got uh, Marissa Miller from last week's Wolf Den Live who says, uh, she also known simp. She says, I've never heard a <laughs> quote standing online to mean the same thing as standing in line. Bruh, online means like being on the internet. You also have to remember that Bob and I predate the internet. That's true. So. Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prince Wolfchild says, thanks for making buy more stuff, Will. I have never played Doom Eternal or much of any Doom game for that matter, but I have to buy this Doom Accord figure. <laughs> uh, now I just need to find somewhere to put it. I'll make room. I haven't you played won't. Doom Eternal either. I only played like a few hours of the first... Uh, of the 2016 doom game yeah J uh, john crawford hey bob two things sd card uh standard are universal the nintendo branded micro sd card are just uhs one bus speed cards which are the same as the standard U uh sand disc ultra cards he also tweeted this at me uh you can copy your sd card to a bigger one as long as the new one is formatted on your fir switch first uh, uh to his first point uh, the mic the Nintendo branded micro SD cards are UHS one. They are UHS three. They are not UHS one. Okay. Nintendo recommends UHS one cards. UHS three is slightly faster, but it doesn't make a difference in the Switch. Um. So to clarify, the the Nintendo branded ones are UHS three. Uh, but to a second point, you can copy SD cards to a bigger one. We know that. They just, it just never worked for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should be able to. We have never gotten it to work. Uh, it just always corrupts or something happens. Jack Dimock says, I think online is a New York thing. That's what we're saying. I'm going to figure this out. I think it's a Long Island thing. Probably. But I'm going to figure this out. Emily Van Engen says, uh, I stumbled upon the Wolf Den at the start of quarantine and your content has brought me a lot of joy and laughter. I'm loving the podcast and appreciate the work you guys put into it. As a tired teacher, I look forward to coming home and catching up with the Wolf Den clips, podcasts, replays, and videos. Thanks again, guys. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. For getting all the content across all the different platforms yeah. because it's a little spread out and it can be a little annoying and I appreciate you going through it with us yeah uh that's just the that's just how it got to be yep thanks youtube all right we're in the chat finally yes make it good people and we're making good time here well i mean i still want them to make it good <laughs> chris Salito says so superman stream soon i also kind of want to actually play through all of ocarina of time oh Oh, this ought to be good. But if I do a uh, Nintendo 64 stream, I think I want to do it from the Nintendo 64. I don't want to emulate it. Right. Right, right. Does Superman have uh, s s checkpoints and save like save file and stuff? I, I think it has a save file. I don't remember if it has checkpoints. If it does, it's probably they're probably bad checkpoints. Well, if it has save file, then yeah, it's got to have checkpoints. Not necessarily. The hell's good? What's good is a save file then? I mean, so it's if like if you if maybe it saves at the beginning of the level and that's it. Yeah. Okay. I just want to save my progress. Right. Okay. I'm saying like if you die and you're like you have to restart for some reason. What it makes might start you, you back think? The beginning of the level. What makes you think I'm gonna die, Will? I mean, it's a good point. You are Superman. <laughs> That's true. Well, he did die. You guys see the hundred dollar Pokeball and Polygon yesterday? Yes, I saw AJ tweeted. Wasn't it a thousand dollars? No, no, no. It I is, remember it being too expensive for a Pokeball. I, I think the company's called the Wand Company. I think it's the company that makes the wands for Harry Potter. Right, right. I could be making I could be making that up. Yeah. Just because of their name, but it's a replica. It's an officially licensed replica of the Pokeball. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Uh. Game of the year and most anticipated game of the of next year, says Luke Antone. Game of the year for me is Call of Duty Warzone. <laughs> as uh, as much as I hate to say it. Um, and most anticipated uh, game for next year. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm not even really thinking about next year's games. I don't think anything that is going to be game of the year, the year next year has been announced yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've been real. Most of the games I've been playing this year are not from this year. Mm-hmm. Like they've, they've been older games, like from other years. The only like three games I've played from this year are Tony Hawk one and two, the last of us and super Mario 3d all stars. If you count that. Mm-hmm. Um, and two of those are repackages basically. Um, I guess Tony Hawk one and two is my game of the year so far. That is awful. But yeah, I mean, dude, you hear you hear, Gorilla Radio come on, and it's over. <laughs> and you want to turn that shit up? You do. Uh, N Man says Axiom Verge or Katana Zero, which is better by at eight or nine dollars respectively. Uh, you gotta think about whether or not you want to play a roguelite. No. No. A Metroidvania? You want to figure out if you want to play a Metroidvania type game where you got to like, kind of figure out where you're going to go. You got to f- like, you know, figure out yeah. the map and everything. Or if you want to play a very linear, very good game. Um, I I got Katana Zero, by the way, part of that sale. So you better not steer me wrong. It is one of the best games on the Switch. Axiom Verge, I'm sh- I've never played it. I'm sure it is also very good. But... I've, heard, I've heard a lot of good things about Axiom Verge. They, they called it the best metroid game on the wii u okay (laughs) because there was no other metroid game on the wii u you should be able to tell which type of game you'd rather play yeah saeed the the world famous saeed says uh rockstar hasn't released any new games on switch which is weird because they could just port games from mobile onto the switch i want gta san andreas and bully bully i would Uh, imagine like why not bully like yeah do it yeah the, so far the only game they put on switch that at least that i know of is a uh, la noir right that's it but yeah it's uh, the switch could technically run grand theft auto 5 because it's a 360 game <laughs> and the switch can run 360 games as we've seen um but yeah san andreas um vice city gta 3 like those could easily run on the switch I, it's weird that they haven't expanded the the Switch library at all. You know, I, I'd imagine because like they they put everything they put all the GTA games on iOS. Um, I yeah, I don't I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't I don't get it. I mean, we know it could run Grand Theft Auto Five because it runs freaking LA Noir. Yeah. Um. Bob, can you recommend a good and reliable RCA to HDMI converter? The Frame Meister. <laughs> uh, for something a little cheaper, uh, the RetroTINK 2X. I do not recommend the cheap ones on Amazon because they are finicky no. and it depends on what you kind of want to do. Like you can get a cheap one. Actually, yeah. uh, I could recommend a cheap one. There was uh, We have one that actually works pretty good. Uh, yeah. but it it looks like garbage. So yeah. Uh, if if, if you're willing to spend like a hundred bucks, definitely get the Retro Tank Two X. You can get it on Castlevania Games. Yes, and we have an affiliate link somewhere. Go to yeah. one of our uh, HDMI Retro videos. Actually, I don't know if I have a link to this thing. I think you might have bought it. I, I, yeah, I bought that in the, uh, the OSSC, which I would not recommend if, unless you are like an enthusiast. <laughs> I'm talking about the, uh, the HDMI RCA cheap one. Oh, you, you oh I might've bought that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't have it here. Sorry. Uh, but it is linked in one of my videos. I don't know which video. But again, I would still recommend the Frame Meister if you got the money and you really want it to look nice and crisp. Yeah. And uh, or the Retro Tank. Um. Uh, did you see the 11.0 patch notes? You can transfer game saves between multiple switches and keep parity. I did. Uh, you're well. You're referring to the cloud saves, right? I think so. That's what we were talking about. 
uh luke antone will you stream the game awards this year when is it i just saw an ad for it what gamecube game would be great for the switch mr entrenator pokemon uh i'll say smash brothers melee <laughs> uh eternal darkness sanity's requiem they need to bring that game back personally great. the personal choice for me it would have been sunshine but they did that already uh yeah. uh rogue leader Ooh, yeah but that will never happen uh i might they're putting they put uh episode one racer on there that is true uh, and uh, and uh, freaking jedi outcast and stuff yeah uh, what the hell was I thinking? The Metroid Prime trilogy, obviously. Surprised that hasn't been ported over. I think they're waiting to pull the trigger on it. I think it's ready and ready yeah. to go. Do we know when the game awards is? Uh, sorry, I was looking that up. Um, uh, December tenth. Next week, right? Next yeah. Thursday, maybe. I'm going to put Fat Eddie, Baby on it. Eddie Vedder is going to perform at the Game Awards. Ooh. Hey, ah. kids. Remember Eddie Vedder? <laughs> uh, I think that's it. I think we're good. I think, right. I think we've had enough of you people. All uh, right. But thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we will put up an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast, so you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast found on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and your podcast service of choice. If we're not on your favorite podcast service, let us know and we will do everything we can to fix that problem. Uh, so I will be streaming on Thursday. Me and AJ are going to stream Bogs, the cat dog game, except instead of <laughs> cat dog, it is dog dog. There you go. Um, so yeah, that'll be Thursday. I don't think I'm streaming tomorrow. It'll be a wild card if I do, but I highly doubt that I am. Uh, so I'll see you Thursday. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching. Make sure you go to the YouTube video and drop a like, because that's very important to us. Uh, and goodbye. Oh, uh, wait, before you leave, go no, watch. No. I'm going to raid Scootish. Go watch Scootish. Yeah. Uh, if you're here on Twitch. Uh, anyway, if you're not here on Twitch, goodbye. Bye.